This is TV News, Britain's News Channel and Liz Truss. Welcome back to Lee. Of course, GB News was last here with you during the leadership campaign nearly a year ago. Since then, so much has changed. This is your first major UK TV appearance since being forced out as Prime Minister. And we'll be talking about a range of important subjects tonight. But obviously, as a news channel, we must start with the breaking news. And I need your reaction to this decision by the Privileges Committee today to suspend Boris Johnson for 90 days. That's no way to treat a former Prime Minister, is it, Liz? Well, let's all remember, we're, we're here in Lee today. And Lee for the first time in its entire history as a constituency, voted for Boris Johnson in 2019. And I'm a believer in democracy. I know that Boris got a huge mandate, and he got a mandate to get Brexit done and to change Britain. And people voted for him because he was optimistic about our country's future. He had a vision. So in the first place, what I think was wrong was Conservative MPs removing an elected prime minister that so many people had voted for. Absolutely. And I think that has sown the seeds of huge problems for our party. Now, on the subject of today's ruling, uh, I'm not going to question the integrity of the MPs on that committee. I haven't yet had the opportunity to look at the report. 33,000 words. Well, the 33,000 words. But fundamentally... The people who, sh who should be making decisions about who MPs are are the voters. Mm. And that's the people we seem to be forgetting. And what I'm here today to talk about in Lee is what people want to see change. What do they want to see change about Britain? What do they want to see happening here in Lee? How are we going to get growth going? How are we going to get businesses going? How are we going to deliver on what we promised back in 2019. But I mean, Liz, this committee, and look, I understand, I can call it a kangaroo court. You can't because they will come for you, given this chilling Ministry of Truth style approach. I, mean, I do think it's incredibly important we protect free speech in Britain. Yeah. And people have to be able to say what they think. Because we know what happens mm. and the thin end of a wedge if people aren't able to mm. express their opinions. And I think that applies to parliamentarians. Indeed. As much as it applies Indeed. to everybody else in this country. But, but Liz. So I don't support going after MPs who make comments no, in public. It's ludicrous. And not only that, they want to ban Boris Johnson, a man who won a landslide about three and a half years ago, who delivered Brexit. Doesn't it feel like a lifetime ago? It does. Ago? I mean, it, it really does, does doesn't a lot's it? Gone it feels down, like right? a lifetime ago. A lot ago. has gone down. They want to ban him from the parliamentary estate. I mean, this is gross overreach, is it not? Well, as I say, I'm not going to question the integrity of these MPs. We do have these committees that, that have been set up. But it does seem to me a very harsh decision. I, that's my you were Boris Johnson's foreign secretary. You remained loyal to him over your time in the cabinet. What do you think his legacy is and can he still stage a political comeback? Well, never, ever, ever write Boris off. <laughs> that, that is something that I think is very, very clear. And I'm sure we will hear more from him. And he's done a huge amount. I mean, mm. if Boris had not joined the Brexit campaign, would Brexit have won? Mm. I very much doubt it. If Boris had not been our leader in 2019, I mean, the people in this audience can answer that. Do you think we would have elected a Conservative MP here in Lee? No, no, no. no there we are. So lots of support for Boris and in that, the room. You know, this is a huge change in our country. And I was so excited back in 2019 where these seats in places like Lee... In Yorkshire, where I'm from, sorry, I'm on the wrong side of the pen. I, I apologise for that. I should have said that earlier. But, you know, they voted Conservative yeah. for the first time because yes. we gave hope mm. and optimism about the future. And we desperately need to get that sense of so, so, so optimism you, back. You're still in touch with Boris. Do you believe he can make a positive impact in the Conservative Party in the future? I do. I do believe he can. And, Will you work you know, with him he all, on that? Look, I'm not sort of talking about you know, what, 
what Boris's plans are. You, no doubt Boris, now he's got more free time. He'll be on Dan Wooten Live very soon, I would imagine. He better be. <laughs> the second former Prime next Minister. Week. I hear he's on next week. So uh, you'll have to ask yeah. him about his plans. But you but- want him in the Conservative Party. The reason I ask that is, of course, there's a lot of rumours about could he potentially form some sort of breakaway populist party with the likes of our friend Nigel Farage. But presumably you want him to stay in the Conservative Party and push forward small C Conservatives. I mean, I've, I've been a Conservative member for 25 years. The first party conference I went to was Blackpool back in 1997 and you know, in many ways it wasn't a great year for us as Conservatives and we've been through tough times and we've been through good times and we, you know, we have to stay and we have to fight okay. because I think we've got to fight for the Conservatism yeah. we believe in. So I want Boris to stay and fight for his vision. Okay.